Today I want to focus on one of the most powerful features of Settler so far. Because whereas Settler is designed with sensible defaults in every aspect, especially when it comes to aesthetical preferences and visual needs, users tend to have very peculiar and different tastes. So to accommodate all of these different ideas about how the app should actually look, we opted to give you one of the most advanced features that is out there in the world of Markdown editors. Because this feature is so advanced, it can be quite daunting to work with it. It can be quite dangerous depending on what you want to do. But in this video, I want to show you how you can make use of this for your own good. I'm obviously talking about custom CSS. So without any further ado, let's get to customizing the app completely. Again, I'm starting with the default settings because this is likely where most of you will start. Um, you're th you might have already chosen a different theme. So let's just do this because most users will be happy with one of the five themes that currently ship with the app. I personally use basically the Bordeaux theme without any uh, customizations, but depending on your preferences, you might want to choose a different one. As you can see, the Bordeaux theme, but also all the other themes that the app ships with have a certain idea. For instance, the Bordeaux theme has as its highlighting color the red that is also used in the Karl Marx Stadt theme and it features monospace font. But depending on where you come from, what you're used to and uh, with what you can work best, you might want to customize this even further. In order to do so, we have implemented custom CSS. First, a little bit of background as to why this is possible and how this works. Settler is based upon Electron. Electron basically is just the Chrome browser wrapped in its own binary and what Settler does is basically only add its own logic to it. This also means that the whole appearance of Settler is basically directed by CSS rules. So what you're actually looking at when you open up Settler is a plain old web page. So with a little bit of knowledge of uh, cascading style sheets or CSS, you can customize the appearance of Settler completely to your own likings. You can add your own custom CSS in a specific settings dialog. You can head over to them by clicking file on Windows and Linux or the application menu on uh, macOS and choose custom CSS. What will open is a normal dialog window as you know it from Settler, uh, but this time with a code editor in which you can uh, write CSS directives. The idea behind custom CSS is that you are able to override any directives of the application itself. The application itself has two CSS files that are always loaded. First is the geometry file, which contains directives on where elements should be positioned and how big they should be. And the theme file then determines, for instance, the colors, sometimes borders and uh, border radiuses. All themes share the one geometry file, but then modify the certain elements to fulfill a certain aesthetic. And then as a, as a third file, what will be loaded is your custom CSS. And the way CSS works is that uh, later rules override the previous. So basically using CSS, custom CSS, you can override anything that the application defines. Before we actually start with implementing custom CSS, there are two preconditions that you should make sure you already fulfill before continuing. The first is that you have an idea of what you want to change and in what way you want to change this. And the second is that you already have some familiarity with CSS. You don't need to know much of CSS, but a little bit will help you get to where you want to be. So in this video, what I will explain to you is basically how to find which rules you want to set and where to find them, but not so much as how to achieve a certain aesthetic. To learn more about CSS in itself, please refer to uh, the numerous resources that are on the internet. But with that out of the way, let's get started. I personally think it's always uh, better to get started with custom CSS when you know what you actually want to customize. Um, but Therefore, you will need to have the debug mode enabled. So head over into the preferences and over in the advanced tab, make sure to enable the debug mode. 
save the preferences and then you will see that a new menu item has popped up called develop. This is the menu, menu that we as the developers make use of a lot when we debug the application, when we add new features and when we want to see what goes wrong. So what you will be needing are the developer tools. So let's toggle them. As you can see, the developer tools are basically a bunch of tools that can be used to debug an application, to see what is happening and also to inspect the console where potential error messages are locked. But for custom CSS, what we need is the elements tab. So head over there and click elements. You can of course also resize the tab uh, so that it's a little bit more um, viewable. Within this elements tab, you have basically three panes which are of uh, importance here. The first is the actual DOM structure, which is up here, which describes uh, the structure of the document itself. And then down here, where currently I am blocking this, um, are the CSS rules. Um, so let me quickly reposition this to the other side. So and now you can see here are the CSS rules. And this is basically what determines how elements look. So now let's assume that you want to change, for instance, the size of headings. So the easiest way to do this is to uh, select an element in the page to inspect it. So just click this button and then you can hover over these elements and you can see that the application already highlights them for you. So you can exactly see which element will be selected. And if you look over in the uh, developer tools, you can see it will immediately select the one that your mouse is currently over. So just click and it will remain selected. Uh, here you can see something specific with regard to Code Mirror, which is the editor at the heart of the application, because a lot of stuff is done not necessarily with these classes, but with the uh, surrounding so-called wrapper. For instance, the size of the headings is determined by this rule out here and not by one of the inner elements. So if you, for instance, want to uh, make the headings level one the same size as the normal text, you can click this element and it will automatically select the corresponding uh, CSS styles so that you can see them. As you can see here, the code mirror size header one class has been assigned a font size of 2am. So if you want to reduce this size or increase them, you can easily just click in here. And for instance, in this case, Chrome is in uh, intelligent enough if I press the arrow key down to just decreases to 1 EM. So you can play around a little bit. And if you go out there, it will remain like this. This is helpful to play around a little bit with different directives in order to achieve what you are looking for. For instance, what we could also do here, um, which I'm do going to do just out of uh, demonstration reasons is, for instance, a background color. Um, as I already mentioned, uh, with, with regard of a, cascading style sheets, which I'm not going to explain here, please refer to some online resources. So let's just make it white. It won't look good, but well, ah, it's a little bit too bright. Actually, you can uh, even ah, let's 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 do something really ugly. Why not? Ah, let's, do, let's do this. So it doesn't really look good, as you can see, but uh, you can do a lot of stuff here. So also some border radius, just so that you can see what you can uh, customize here. So and once you're ready with uh, doing this, what you can do is select all of this. You can also just click in here to have just the classes, the so-called selectors selected, copy them, uh, open the custom CSS, and simply pass this in. In this case, we have uh, only the selector and then everything that you have customized, you can uh, add here. So let's just copy this over. And pass this in here. And you can also see that there's syntax highlighting enabled. So this is uh, easier to spot if you have some typos in there. And then save. And it will immediately reload the 
custom CSS. And as you can see, the custom CSS has already reloaded with the correct rules. And as you can see in the original file, they have been stroking out because now they have been superseded by the custom CSS. And this is basically all you need to know to create a workflow in order to customize your own Settler experience and create a custom CSS that fits your very own aesthetic preferences. Just make sure to select a theme that is appropriate for your own custom CSS because if I'm now going to switch the theme, it will look completely different. Additionally, if you create a custom CSS that we as, as the developers like, there is a great chance of us just retweeting this uh, with your credits and uh, making it publicly known that you have created something really cool that other people should use. And with this, I will conclude this video. I hope you have a lot of fun customizing your experience and I'm looking forward to seeing what you have to share over on the forum or on Reddit or on Twitter. Just choose whatever medium you are most comfortable with. And as always, if you like this video, make sure to subscribe and also hit the notification bell in order to uh, receive a notification every time we upload a new video to this series in order to stay up to date. Thanks for watching.